Yeah. Oh, 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 that is the oh. Yeah. Forgot about that. That is a little uh. Literally three days. A little mini regional monthly hosted by the fine people who host uh, Spectrum Smash over in New Jersey. Okay, I have no idea who's what, what. We got Cloud versus Cloud. And what is this? Utopian Ralphie. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, Utopian right. Ray versus Ralphie. I want to say Ray is the the first player Cloud. Uh, I really don't know either of these guys by their like in-game tags, so I couldn't tell. But here we go. Apparently, Utopian Ray yeah, is uh, uh, player one on the red one. I'm I'm guessing. I, I'm guessing too because I, it's his Advent Children costume. I feel like I've never seen. I have never oh, yeah, seen. Ralphie uh, always plays Advent. Yeah, You're right. yeah Ralphie true, has actually. never played X Soldier. Ooh. He's gonna sink down with the up airs. What Cloud does best. Now you notice that Ralph, uh, sorry, Ray is not playing Rosalina this time around because it's it, he does not like the matchup. He does uh, not like playing against Cloud. Most Rosalina players do not like the matchup. It is considered one of, if not Rosalina's worst matchup. Cloud Sword, pretty much every hit just obliterates the Luma, and it's just so easy as that down air is going to take the stock off the missed tech from Ralphie. So easy to just juggle, you know, Rosa around the floaty character, kill her super early as well with Limit, you know. It's just. It ain't a good one. You know, it ain't too fun. And Utopian Ray apparently definitely has enough faith in his cloud to go up against a cloud as proficient as Ralphie. But right now, it ain't looking it ain't looking too bad, but it ain't looking too pretty either. There's about 100% differential between these players as Utopian Ray gets his limit while Ralphie still does not have his. That air dodge was the spookiest thing I've ever seen. That was a good blade beam forcing Ray to co consume his limit. Use his climb magic to get back onto the stage. Now he's taking out 134%. They're both charging for the limit. But that time, you notice that Ray opted to play a little bit more aggressive because Ralphie's limit was charged a little bit further. And then he paid for the price for it. So sent flying by that back air. Game number one going to Ralphie. Mm. Hawk Ralphie. As our, uh, as our good friend uh, Aretha Franklin would say, God rest her soul, uh, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Why only a little bit? Just a little bit of uh, respect. Okay. I feel it. That's what the backup singers say, you know? I'm always That was shocked. completely not relevant to anything that is. <laughs> I was like, I was going to say. At all. I don't know why I was thinking about that. I'm not, I was just <laughs> nodding going, uh-huh. No, I'm always curious whenever the double clouds don't, like, start off the match by charging limit. Yeah! There we go! That's what I'm talking about! Woo. Yo, that looks, uh, like they, uh, looks like they hurt you, homie. Thank God. Look at that. That's dead ass all I wanted. Like, I... <laughs> I'm good. I don't, I don't yeah. care who wins this now. It's definitely the most uh, optimal thing, like when both clouds charge their mm -hmm. limit like that, because then they both get to like whip out either of their four final smashes whenever yeah. they want, and they're both on that playing field, so it's not like one character has all of their final smashes and the other one has none. Oh, Ray is but, dead. Uh, yeah, he is. Good nair. Now, the, the second his double jump got Ian, but, it was uh, just like, that was going to be a struggle bus to get back to stage. Some people just want to play the game immediately. Are you real? I mean... He had, he had his limit and he ran down there anyway. I've seen Ray go off stage and nair Ralphie twice now. Yeah, this and they is both a, were, the second one resulted in a kill if he didn't have his limit. Yeah, you told me Ray may be a Rosa player, but this cloud is a uh, pretty aggressive. Yeah, not gonna lie, pretty ballsy as well to be running off stage doing nairs like oh that. Oh my forward, god! Forward smash catch, gonna Ugh. do it against Ralphie right there, taking the stock, evening it out. Talk to him. Talk to him, sir. But yeah, man, I mean like. He ran off stage and did nares to try and gimp him off of what had to be a missed tech while the clouds had limit. Mm -hmm. Who does that? Uh, Ray. Who, what, Ray. I mean, the thing apparently. is, he's down his stock, so he's just like, I just need to make a power play. I just got, I got to show my dominance here. <laughs> that was a good call from Ralphie. Recognize that the platform was going to be right there. That could be an option for Ray to jump on the platform. But great power shield. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Hold on, that ledge. He's still going to hold on this limit for as long as he can because he needs it. This is the only advantage he's got going against Ralphie. Doesn't matter what the percents are. If you get him off stage without his double jump, that's why he fast fell that neutral as fast as possible. It is cloud strife, ladies and gentlemen. It doesn't need... Sometimes it may not even matter so much the uh, skill disparity when this character gets his limit when he gets you in those juggles. He brings back games from the depths of hell. You cannot count Utopian Ray out of this uh, out of this uh, match, out of this set, out of anything. Oh! <laughs> He's gonna wait for him to Get win aggressive. the limit, cl uh, not climb hazard, excuse me, the limit plate beam and just finishing touch in his face. Just as I say that, the, what did I tell you, Austin? The biggest oh call God. out, the biggest call out. It was like, you're gonna charge <laughs> at me. Because it, it, it's actually optimal for Ralphie to, like, you know, throw that blade beam, apply that shield pressure, dash in, and try to go for a grab or something. And Ralph, Ray was like, Get off me, what the heck? That. Hey, hey, you can call it a commentator's curse. You can you can call it stupidity. 
You can call it Cloud Strife, whatever you want. When, this, when you're up against a cloud, it doesn't matter how big your lead is. Never start sleeping. Never do anything. Never start sleeping. Don't, and here we go. We got the limit coming out. Don't. This character brings back games from the depths of hell, ladies and gentlemen. As you saw with Utopian Ray right there. And all of a sudden, uh, this set is evened out. This match is evened out. And Utopian Ray is all of a sudden beyond back in this. Okay, they're, just, they're both fishing for these neutral layers. This this is, this is such this a good combo. Or... This is hype. I mean, they're uh, both at that prime percent where that neutral layer will connect into a cross slash, you know? That's, that's, that's probably why they're both doing it. Oh, nice one. coverage. Ooh, good, good air, air dodge. dodge. Eh, Jinx, you owe me a soda. No, darn it. <laughs> I don't like soda. Don't buy me one. Oh, lit. Or pop, however you other pleb I had people. some Zeppelis earlier, but I gave them all the marks. Is he dead? Yeah, he's dead. Off of the jump. Off of Goodbye. Goodbye. Ralphie, Utopian Ray. Is Ray about to beat? Up a game on the Cloud Legend himself. He's about to beat Ralphie in the ditto? That's that's kind of far-fetched, <laughs> if I do say so myself. <laughs> that, is still, that is definitely a little far-fetched. I mean, like, not to sleep on Utopian Ray. Not to sleep. He's no, his Cloud's his good. Cloud he's got his, his Cloud is good, but we are talking about Ralphie here, you know? And then Ralphie's actually talked about how he's trying this tournament. Ooh, so, that's a first. Yeah, it's, it's been a while. Okay, we got that limit break. I mean, he's still chilling at that high, very high percent. You know, again, I, I feel like Ralphie's been on point with these blade beams because he recognizes that Ray's going to immediately go for a double jump just to eat his limit. Very good call out. Very safe option to go for, too. Like, he's super safe to just throw out a projectile. He's only got 18% tagged on as well. He can easily get this dash attack or back air. Honestly, at this point, just go for, like, a safe back air. Yeah, this is when you can definitely start fishing for back air when you're at this high of a percent against a, uh, I guess another cloud or pretty much anyone else. But that up air is going to trade with the dare. Good trade Explode. for Ralphie. Oh, fantastic trade for Ralphie. Are you kidding? I mean, one lived, one died. I mean, evening out the percents pretty much. There's only 33 percent. I can easily one down tilt, could build something big. And Fish. here we go. Yeah, he's got the limit too, so allows some more combos to connect more than usual. Nice. Cash with that up tilt, a little greedy with that forward smash. You want to get that call out again. That up tilt was actually kind of crazy because, like, Ralphie had his dare out and everything. And, like, yeah. Ray just kind of. Outspaced dare. Yeah, he kind of just positioned himself just right to the point where, like, hey, positioned and timed it just right to the point where, like, up tilt just kind of went around it a little bit. And not many moves can you really say go around Cloud's downer. That neutral scared me so much. You can't really so say much. that. You, like, jumped out of your seat. I was scared. <laughs> oh, my He's God. Living. He's living. He's living. Slash to make his way back onto the stage. Actually, like, cross slash there as an aggressive option to make his way back. A lot of people use it just to try and get the kill, but like sometimes people they don't use it for like all its versatility. But Ralphie, a little too Ooh. good for that at this stage in the game. Ray was completely vulnerable to that neutral air at the edge. Could have easily died. That back air ex being extended by the balloon. He's just trying to get away from the back airs. He's still alive. Ooh, Ralphie. Oh no! Oh. He should have just gone for it! Mm. Just go for that second swing! That You're dead anyways! Is very sad. That's the, that's not how I wanted that set to end. We definitely don't have like sad music, uh, sad music on the soundboard, right? No. No. All right. Was he? He must have lost his double jump somewhere. Can I see that replay one more time, Devin? I f where did he? Uh, yeah. What? No. Yeah, he back aired. Didn't lose his Where's double, his double jump, jump there. So he had his double jump. Did uh, he thought he was gonna grab the ledge? Yeah. He actually just thought he was gonna grab the ledge. He either thought he was gonna grab the ledge or the much less likely scenario, he got his double jump out there for like a split second, like yeah. a frame or something, and just it ate it out. But that. Didn't look like that. That's what happened. So. The second he initiated the climb hazard, I thought he was gonna go for the second swing, but then like obviously he recognized that the second swing wouldn't have worked because his like he was too far away for the second swing to like connect. So he's like, okay, I'm gonna try to go for the ledge instead. That's kind of like, I don't know. That was just me. Like I would, I was thinking maybe he should take him to Palutena's temple. It's very, very big, you know, like he's going to live a lot longer against Lucario's aura and everything, you know. That's that's where I theorize, you know, very big stage, doesn't want to, like, deal with the aura too much, you know, dying early, you know. I would definitely take him to Palutena's Temple, but no, he's going to run it off to town and city instead. One of the smaller stages, lowest vertical blast zone out of all the legal stages, and I'm actually serious about that. But, uh... What the hell just happened? <laughs> you were not having... I was just... What is going you on? You were not having any of that. All I was thinking was, man, I hope they have more Final Fantasy VII songs in Ultimate. Uh, Devin, uh, fix the score. Um, uh, VV's up again. Stop the joke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got we got VV sitting at 70%. I mean, that's going to be Lucario's like main shtick, right? Is Whenever Lucario gets hit, that aura builds, allows him to kill faster. Rage affects him so greatly in that manner. Mm -hmm. Yes, it I, also carries into his second stock. Yes, I believe Aura maxes out at about 170, 175. 
Something the like higher that. than rage, yeah. Yeah, it, it does last uh, higher than rage, and it is stacked on top of rage, which is what makes Lucario just the absolute fearsome beast that he always is. Just you're, in a sense, what I always say, like whenever people are fighting Lucario, you're just, it's like you're parking in New York, because yeah. you're literally just feeding the meter over and over again. Oh, and the more you no. feed it, the longer you have to take care of it. You're just, you're just putting more and more into it, and it's just gonna wind up screwing you harder. And that's why Dill is trying to play extremely safe this way. Like, not only is Dill a careful player, he's going to be doing it again, especially against uh, Lucario at this higher percent. Because they're both at death percent. That's what's scary right now. Yeah. It's e I consider this even. Yeah, and up throw up air uh, will definitely kill Dill at this percent. Or, or Vivi. Up throw up air will kill Vivi. It'll instead. definitely kill Vivi because he just died to that. Mm -hmm. uh, good, good patience on that air dodge. Yeah. One of the biggest tricks of the trade when fighting Lucario is to kill him early if you can. And I always thought that was silly advice whenever somebody said it, because, like, yeah, obviously I want to kill my opponent first. I want to kill him early, but against Lucario, if you're up a full stock and then he responds, uh, <laughs> he respawns at 0% with no rage, no aura or anything, I do believe he is literally the weakest character in the game in terms of damage. And if you're up a full stock in that position against Lucario, he really has a gigantic mountain to climb. A lot higher than, like, certain other characters would, if you can even argue that, because, you know, you know the more you hit him, the more our damage uh, rage he has, but, you know, if you can kill him early, that's fantastic. It looks like Dill is already finding his way to do that. Diddy Kong's neutral, hit Dill's neutral, too overpowering, just outmaneuvering him, outplaying, finding his way, and Vivi is still struggling to finish out this stock. I mean, Dill's using that, those great back airs that Diddy Kong employs by just, like, throwing him a lot out of shield, just forming this wall in front of Vivi. Vivi's just struggling to just find, like, this grab. Cause that's, that's pretty much what Lucario wants the majority of the time. He wants those grabs. Grabs lead into so much stuff. Allows him to, like, combo a lot, big damage. Right now, struggling off stage. Once he uses the extreme speed, catches him on the stage. It's, it becomes a mix-up. Where is he going to go? On the stage, on the ledge. Mm -hmm. Lucario's not only have to think about mixing that up when they're making the way back, they also have to, like, uh, they also have to do it in such a way that they don't get that special hard landing lag, you know? much more complicated recovery than it really appears to be. There's a lot on the Lucario's mind when they think about yeah. it. And right there, you mm -hmm. saw it. There it is. There's the hard landing lag. Didn't take that into account. Or maybe he did take it into account, and he just couldn't find a way to really just land on the center stage and find his way back without suffering it's through that landing lag. It is very tricky, you know? But it is going to be his fall for that first game. First one going to Dill. And uh, he is looking very pretty getting rid of triplets. Now, what's interesting is I was talking with Vivi. I was conversing with them previously. He, uh, I was just mentioning, actually, he wasn't even talking to me. I was talking to someone else, and he was just overhearing. I was, I was talking to Mystery. I was like, Mystery, can you please just beat Dill? Can you please, for all things holy, can you just do it? And then uh, later on, Mystery lost. I'm like, well, Dill's going to win another tournament, I guess. And Vivi literally goes up to me, hey, I can beat him. I was like, cool, do it. So, you know what? It's still game two. Vivi could easily bring this back. I would love for that to come true. We have definitely seen Vivi fight back and come back from much more dire situations than this. And I want to reiterate, it's not that I don't, that I dislike Dill, right? Mm -hmm. I just think he takes too long for a set. No, I, th I honestly just, he wins too many tournaments lately and it's getting a little Bro. stale and I want someone else to win. No, dude, it's literally Aaron Paul, dude. He just, he can't keep getting away with it. He Dang. can't keep getting away he just, with it. He just did. He just, that was, ugh. I don't, feel, I don't feel good about that one. I, you know, he had to di digest that, you know? Dude, how do you think Vivi feels? He has to digest that. And he didn't even have time to because he died. Mm -hmm. And now he's already, like, overlapping him in percent of his second yeah. stock. Looking pretty bleak here. But he's got the Aura Sphere. They can delete the Banana Peel. It's on the ground. Like, I think that's why he opted to go to Final Destination is because then there's no, like, there's no way for, like, a Banana to just chill on a platform to, like, mess up his timing. You're just throwing the projectile out, deleting the Banana Peel, getting it out of there. But it is just, oof. It's like I said, man, this is the absolute best possible position you can possibly be against, uh, against Vi- You're not dead. Oh, wow. And a, only 100% on that forward smash right there. That was textbook. That was tragic. He got him with the banana and everything. Landed the forward smash. Killed Lucario early to make sure he didn't have too much rage. Wow. Yeah, I need glasses. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that was Jen. Um, I, just, I just didn't expect Vivi to play immediately I don't know why again. I, didn't, um, I don't know why I didn't fight you. Poor Vivi, it. dude. Like, he has to, like, play again right after losing. Yeah, That's, you know, that some, sucks when that happens. Some people don't mind that. You know, some people just want to, like, they don't want to wait, like, in between matches. They want to keep their momentum going, you know, just, like, what one momentum? match to the next to the next. What momentum? The, the, the losing the, yeah, momentum? Gotta, yeah. Is that I, what you're I, talking about? I don't like, know. Some people don't like to take too long of breaks in that's between fair. their matches. But I don't know. I don't know how Vivi is. I don't know if he's like that. I really I really can't judge. But either way, we got ourselves a good old-fashioned Pokemon battle. 
here in Loser's Top 6 of, of Xeno. I was about to say something else. I'm a legend. Man, I mean, you said Pokemon Battle, and I was thinking, wow, you can witness this in Pokemon Tournament. And then I remembered that Greninja not in that game. I know a lot That's of very silly. I, I know a lot of fans want him in that game, but regardless, we got Vivi pushed him off stage with that down air. He's doing a, a way better job than he was against Dill. I feel like the, there's just like this mental block he had against Dill in that cell. He just couldn't like land a swing. It's going a lot better here against Venia. I recognize he's going to go for the uh, neutral air from midair. Get the combo started. Ooh, nice get him call. With the diamond cutter. Not he's still living. I think he's a little bit too low for Sim. My man's gonna shout his name to let you know what he did just did to you. I was just Down tilt to, to up smash. I was just about to say. A lot Greninja. of people, you know, Greninja's not a very common character. Some people joke about like, oh, I forget Greninja's in this game. Sometimes I forget about that. And he's here to remind you. He's here to come out here. He's gonna say his name twice, doing the same move over and over and over again, saying his name. I am Greninja, letting you know where he is. One. Venia is one of the best ones in the world. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, I'm sitting at 106 percent. Trying to follow up with that neutral just in case he would have teched in place or missed the tech. Oh, that's a very Ve uh, Greninja thing to do, or a Venia thing to do. Uh, he goes for that downer. He's expecting Vivi to be down there, or I, I, he, he went for either way too hard of a read, thinking he was going to be down there, or it was a miss in, but one of the two. Because it's not, it's actually not surprising to see Venia go for something like that. No, not Which at Which is all. why I don't think maybe it wouldn't have been a miss. Because normally I would say, oh, that's a miss input, but. I think he dead ass thought Vivi was gonna be down there. Yeah, not at all. Venia is definitely He's Venia a nut. Is definitely he's, he's, a, a nut. he's a nut. He's an aggressor. If we if you ever done did see an aggressive player before in your life. So I would imagine that that down there might have just been a little bit of a greed play as that up smash is gonna take the first game. Uh Venia going up one uh, 1-0 against uh against Vivi. He might have just gotten a little hungry. A little bit a little greedy, you know. You might be right here. You might not. Either way I'm gonna do this. Crazy. Vivi It's absolutely crazy, but I'm gonna try it. I felt like Vivi was playing a lot better when he was grounded, not jumping. Because every, every single time he jumped, I felt like he was getting hit by something and then sent higher into the air. And every time he went to lay back down to the ground, he just fast fell. I think he wanted to challenge Venia every single time. And then up smash was always there waiting for him. That's how both of his stocks got deleted. Oh, wait, no, one of them was a down tilt up smash, my bad. Regardless, you know, up smash. Yeah. The, the finishing blow. What, Very what, common. Chaos. Whatever way you, you can get your up smashes, just get them out. It's the name of the game. Whatever way you can do it. Got him in the knockdown situation. Tech chase. Up throw back air. Getting that good damage. Again, Venia just... Uh, Greninja gets a lot off of aerials because the, a lot of them will just either great for spacing, like the forward air, or the neutral air is a great combo starter. But unfortunately, it requires him to be able to uh, force himself to be airborne, which can kind of put himself in a bad situation depending on who he's fighting against. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I think in general, like, half the time, just being in the air in Smash 4... It's kind of a bad thing. Can we talk about that entire situation that just transpired? Oh, my just, freaking god. That was just classic Venny, my dude. Yeah. I mean, he just like... I, I, I was just looking at that without batting an eye because I'm just like, that's just what he does. Just, that's just another day. Welcome to Xeno. You know what I mean? Like, it usually starts like that, but then he just kept it going with the tech read. Mm -hmm. just a, my man is just all over, up, up, in, his, up in this dude's head. Mm -hmm. Let's be real. Yeah. But being in the air in Smash 4... A lot of the time, and depending on the stage and the matchup as well, it's just never really a good thing. Because, like, your opponent is that back air, gonna do it. The aura coming into play. Shotgun blast. But, you know, there's the up air again, up smash. Uh, this should be death. Yeah. The high smash out of the skid. Hydro pump actually messing with Vivi's recovery, I think. Because there's no way one to be, like, that center stage with that much la landing lag. For sure. Okay, Vivi's still chilling. Trying to find his way back down to the ground. I was thinking with a forward air. I thought that was going to be a neutral air to try and start something there. But Venia selecting to do a forward air instead. Potentially trying to start some other forward air to a grab combo. Vivi's going to get some good damage of his own because of it. But dropping the combo. Neutral reset again with the up air. The double up air coming out from Venia right here. And these guys are just going really tit for tat right now. This is an absolute slobber knocker. Neither of these guys are in advantage. Neither of them really have like any sort of dominant stage control. These guys are swinging. Look at them. And not a single hit's being hit. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's the funny part. There we go. <laughs> That's the funny part, my Starting dude. Starting the neutral B. Going to punish that no tech from Venia. Some additional damage. Now, at this point, Venia is out of jumps. So he has to go for the ledge. Smart stuff. Didn't want to try to go for the, uh, uh, the up special. 
And also, Venia is also very aware of when Vivi wants to get back down to the stage because he has his up smashes ready. So you're going to see Vivi doing a lot of double jumps, trying to stay as airborne as long as possible. Trying to bait it out. But I'm to say that was a great Ooh. neutral bait coming from Venia. Sets him up for an up smash. You gotta be wary of that. That's why you'll see a lot of Lucarios. They don't want to fully have a fully charged or and if they do have one, they just shoot it out so they can start charging again. To allow for combos like that to connect. Only happens when they have a little bit of aura built up. Truly a classic mm. of Lucario. If you ever done did see a classic against Lucario before, the neutral B cancel to the up smash. For a second I actually thought it wasn't gonna kill. And then I remembered it's Lucario and everything kills at crazy percents. Now when we're going that aura. We're going to Venia's favorite stage, man. Final destination. Hmm. Well tell me, tell me, why is this why is this its favorite, Aussie? For glory. My man Venia was born on the internet. Then came to a local tournament, got fourth at a random nebulous, and then discovered the local scene. It's definitely it's a comfort pick for him. And he, he feels comfortable taking like Diddy Kong to this stage. I it gives him a lot of room to run around, jump all over the place, no platforms to hinder him, because he says he doesn't like platforms. Right. I would imagine so. I mean, platforms can like interrupt a lot of like Greninja's, uh, Greninja's like foot school combos and locks and stuff. I mean, at least on FD, no platforms to worry about landing on them and messing up those combos or anything. He's got plenty of open space, not only to do those combos, but to set them up as well. To just get himself ready, like uh, put himself in more of a prime position against his opponent to really get those. So, frankly, I'm not surprised that Venia likes this stage a lot. And I actually didn't even know he was born on For Glory. I didn't know he was a Wi-Fi warrior. Yes, sir. Originally. He was a Wi-Fi warrior in it when he. First came to his nebulous, it was 2015. Ooh. They're gonna do it. Getting a good lead, early lead against uh, Lucario right here. Exactly the position you want to be in. Almost had that up tilt read right after that tech roll. Then he, I mean, Vivi's just gonna keep doing that neutral beast stuff and does some big damage. I mean, he doesn't have that much aura, so he won't be able to get a kill off of it. But Vivi, uh, Venny's gonna assist with that. Start doing these Greninja combos like that. He cannot do these combos if there's platforms in the way. That's why, another reason why he likes the stages. I think he used his jump. Has to use his recovery to get back to the stage. Try and use his shotgun blast of a back air to just space out Venny as much as possible. Again, sees the up smash coming, opting to go for a double jump to escape near death. There we go. Same old, same old. One more stock. Yeah, and all of a sudden, uh, despite the percent difference, uh, difference right here, we are definitely at an even game. Venia spacing around with that forward air again. Oh, because he landed in the center of it, caught Venia in the process. Held on to forward smash a little bit too long. Vivi's starting to build up that percent. Looking big, 46%. He wants that neutral be so bad. Ooh, the power shield. Doesn't want any uh, damage to his shield to potentially get his shield broken by Lucario here and his all of his uh all of his raw power. And these guys are just swinging right now. Venia has to be really, really careful here. You're going to see Vivi do a lot of those B-reverse, uh, those weight bounce and B-reverse uh, neutral Bs like you see right there to try and get that uh, neutral B cancel into the up smash. You're going to be seeing a lot of back airs coming out from him. Oh, my God. This is a pretty scary position for both of these players, especially Venia right here. You're going to die at some pretty wonky percents against Lucario if you're not careful. But he finds his way in with a neutral air. No conversion off of it. Going to hydro pump his uh, way, put him in a... Uh, Forcing him to be off stage just a little bit longer. Dying away to make sure no conversion uh, happens off of that down throw is Vivi. And these guys are so scary right now. That did so oh much God. shield damage. Doing the neutral B into the back here to just lower that shield as much as possible. He wants it so bad, but he's not close enough for the up smash to connect. Lands a grab, pushes him off stage. He has him at 80%. What's that neutral B? But just the simple down tilt. Vivi just. Hanging his head back, putting his hand on his forehead. I mean, you got to feel for it because he almost had that. He landed the neutral B twice against him, but because Greninja was too far away, he could not connect it into an up smash. Mm -hmm. Good awareness from him not being able to get, you know, trigger happy by like, oh, I got to confirm up smash, but he was aware. Uh, Vivi? Yeah. He has, okay. At, at least once. All right. So it's like, at least there's that. You yeah, know, but I, it, yeah, I would still consider it probably an upset because Venny has been getting second and sometimes third a lot lately. And DV has not been getting that. At the very least in terms of ranking. This yeah, quarter, that is, that is Venny's not second in all of them. It's every single one. Yeah, every oh, grant has been Venny Adil. I know yeah. that. That was like... I, I knew the past three have been that way, but I didn't know if there was like another one where he got third. Yeah, the past three have been all this quarter. Yeah, like I definitely have not watched every the, the single Xeno just... since then, but like... The ones I've seen, he's just died super early. And speaking of dying early, Zane already killed Utopian, roofed him off the top, doing, I, doing what Bayonetta does. 
There you go, man. You know, Zane rocking uh, one of the few Bayonettas in New York City. Yeah, that is very true, actually. This is yep. not the land of the barrels. There used to be a time when New York City just sucked against Bayonetta because no one played the character, so no one knew the matchup. So thankfully, we do have people like Zane coming out here into the bracket just trying to like show us that, okay, I, I know how to play this character. Just a little bit. Fighting off against Utopian Ray's Rosalina. Now, I remember DeBuzz has said in the past that he feels insanely comfortable fighting Bayonetta as a Rosalina main, so maybe Ray feels the same way. I, I can imagine, you know, Rosa players feeling a little comfortable. I mean, they, in a sense, do a little bit of the same thing. I mean, Rose can kill off the top super duper early, and Rosa, at the very least, can keep her distance more against uh, Bayonetta with that Luma. Speaking of Luma, that's that's a dead one right there. With that Luma, just and can still apply that same corner pressure that Rosalina can apply to a lot of other characters. So I feel like in this matchup, Rosalina still has a lot of things that she could do against Bayonetta that she could do against a lot of other characters. And with most other characters in this game, it's not really the case against Bayonetta because Bayonetta just shuts down a lot of options. But Rosa, being the amazing character that she is, she still has some, she still has some tools up her sleeve against uh, Bayonetta. Just like that one right there, down throw upper, still gonna work. The patented combo, patented to buzz combo, Utopian Ray combo, uh, J combo. Uh, Kirihawa combo, all the Roses combo, just the patented Rosa combo. I think it's combo, just you know a Rosalina it combo. <laughs> I think it might just be a Rosalina combo. Very astute observation, Alistair. There you go, but get all that. of a sudden, game's uh, relatively even. It's like a percent difference from uh, Zane compared to Utopian Ray right now. About uh, almost 100, actually, but maybe down, but he's definitely not out. There you go, catching him on the ledge with that forward air, trying to push him out. But now Ray's without a Luma. Spawns back in, trying to get back down to the ground. Uses the downer to apply some hit stun so you can feel insanely comfortable down there. Not this letting him touch Rosa the ground. Brings games back. Mm -hmm. This is how she brings games back. She just that Luma spawns after a mere 13 seconds of being away and will just kill you at all sorts of wonky percents that you feel like you shouldn't have died at. But something a little more solid. Bayonetta's back here, gonna be able to take that first uh, stock, that, uh, that second stock, that first game against Utopian uh, Ray right there. Zane going up against him, and he is going to ban FD for his pleasure. Probably now, to make his landings a little easier. Mm -hmm. I was thinking that like that entire like last section when he was just connecting up air after up air, he was recognizing that Zane ran out of jumps the, like, the entirety, so he was like, okay, I gotta abuse this. Don't let him touch the ground, because the second he touches the ground, he gets all of her jumps back, and that, he doesn't want that. We got Cloud coming up from Ray, opting to go to Battlefield, one of Cloud's best stages. Seeing this a lot lately, people will like counter pick Battlefield with their pocket cloud. And I can understand this. I know Cloud can actually keep up with Bayo I mean Rosalina as well, but Cloud also has that potential. Yeah. And despite the uh, stage layout, you know, and this is like it's not exactly a completely common belief among lower level players, but some people may look at Battlefield and they might assume, oh, it's probably easier to land on this stage because like it has all these platforms here for me to land on. But in retrospect, it just gives a character with an up air as amazing as clouds all the time in the world to react to where you're going, all the space in the world to like, all the space in the world to outmaneuver wherever you're going to go. It's, and you know, he's gonna be living longer off the top too because Battlefield is the highest vertical blast zone out of all the legal stages that we play on in our great game of Smash 4. So contrary to that uh, to that myth, if you would, it's, it's not always really the best choice against Cloud. He can juggle you here pretty much just as easily, if not sometimes easier than he can on a lot of the other stages. And right now, I mean, he's, not, he's having kind of a hard time just getting back to center stage. Oh, that was very I risky coming from Zane. I respect it, Alstie. He was, I mean, that, that's like a classic edge guarding thing, right? You have him cornered against the ledge. What are they going to do? The goal is to try to get center stage as fast as possible. So a roll in is like a very common option you'll see. Yeah, you know, it's a very, it, it's a solid read to go through. Like you said, it's still definitely risky because you've committed to an option like mm. Bayonetta's up smash, which is definitely laggy if, if you whiff it or you don't uh, connect with it, obviously. But it is a very solid read to go for anyway, because like you said, you know, like you wanted stage control back and that's two back airs should do it. No, not going to do it. Battlefield so big. And he was thinking about landing a third one too. He wanted to do something else because he was thinking in the back of his mind, this is not going to kill. He should have absolutely landed, uh, not, not maybe not landed as that up smash, uh, run up up smash is going to do it. He should have at least gone for that third back air because like, worst comes to worst, he misses that back air as that up air is going to slowly but surely, very delayed, taking that uh, stock off the top right there. What's, what's the risk? You know, he's already flying that far from the second back air. You know, just go for the third one. If it misses, he's still going to be like, he's still going to fly all the way to the blast zone. Mm -hmm. So basically all you're doing is just trying to get insurance for the kill. But apparently Zayn thought it was enough, elected not to go for that back air, and eventually he wound up losing his stock because of it. So sometimes, I think that's a really good example of like, 
when uh, players aren't like so sure of themselves. There's such a thing as overconfidence, and there's also such a thing as playing a little too scared and being a little too fearful and not going in. And that emotional state can sometimes make all the difference in these types of matches, especially when you're a player like Zane going up against Utopia and Ray, you know, which would technically be an upset as well in its own right, you know which some players can get really nervous about as well when they're doing good against a player who's ranked above them or is considered better than them, you know. But he unfortunately hesitated just a little bit with that one. He's going to lose his stock for it, but it might not matter. No, Utopian Ray, able to find his way back down. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you were mentioning something about the mental game and how, he, like, the mental state's so important mm -hmm. in a 1v1 game. And that's exactly what Ray's trying to go through. He's like, I'm going to go for this cloud and just try to mix it up. He's got my 111%. I like that he didn't go for the third jab. If he went that, for that third jab, he'd be in a very awful spot off stage. So it would have been a free grab. Optin just roll away and says, got that limit ready to go. Just catches the jump with the blade beam. Raise opportunity. Just build him as fast as possible. Already got half of it. Mm, so close. I actually really like the cross He committed to the whole the cross uh, Just, he did it a little bit too high. He was, trying to find, he was trying to find his way, put himself maybe like halfway, put Cloud's body at least halfway through the platform, wound up landing on it instead, mm. and that made that uh, what would have been a relatively, or arguably like kind of safe option, yeah, completely that's unsafe. Just, that's all of a so sudden. terrible. Yeah. The reason he committed to the full swing is he was trying to, he's like, he was caught in a bad spot. So he's like, well, what if I just hesitate, then go for it to try to mix up just in case it get a little bit antsy? As Can it start? Just, just play yeah, game one. Is Ousty, am I pronouncing it right? Can I just say that? Uh, wait, what are you saying? I think yeah. I said Ousty. It's pronounced outside. <laughs> Ralphie calls me Oosty. So he, Does he, he really? Yeah. No, but in all seriousness, though, I have never cast Oosty before. Have Oosty. It's oh, So my name is Austin. Oosty. Outside. Oosty. Shut up. My name is Austin, and then the, my friends called me Oosty, and that's, thus the name was born. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I was just, just trying to make sure I was pronouncing it right. Don't, don't want no disrespect. Yeah, you pronounce it Trent. Okay. okay. All right, but here we go. We got House of 3000. Winners finals, Hach Dill versus Hach Ralphie. This is oh, this is HO3K rigged. I need to see that in the chat <laughs> Don't right do it. now. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> HO3K rigged. I saw you laugh, dude. But anyway, yes, this is definitely a classic HO3K rig if we ever done did see one right here. So this is Ralphie's first time in winners finals in uh, quite some time. Finally coming back from the depths of seeing in winner side. Obviously, that's very important for him. Especially when he's got to face off against the likes of Dill. But right now, this edge guarding looking very rough. Ralphie cannot just find his way back to center stage. And, and he is. Dead. The, pl the pl platform? No. Mm, Could you imagine? Town City just like hesitated like two more seconds. I got you, homie. Platform oh. San, why did you forsake me? That was almost a very bad spot. Do would have like capitalized on that double jump? I was just about to say, if he like ran up and just fared below the platform again and caught his double jump. Could have been game right there. But he, he he wanted to play safe. I get it. Yeah. He, he wanted to he wanted to let Ralphie play the video game, just for a little bit. Why? Know? I don't know, man. Maybe he doesn't want to win four Zenos in a row for some reason. Wants to keep the curse alive. But either Back. way, it's Ooh. looking like that very well might happen if Dill is able to keep playing like this and secure himself a spot in uh, Grand Finals winner side of this uh, Zeno 132. But Ralphie. You never count. You, you, you can never count Cloud out, especially one as proficient and good at this game as uh, as Ralphie, as he uh, risks everything for the edge guard right there. Going for the read, you know, trying to regain stage control would be Dill rolling in like that, no, acknowledging that is Ralphie. You know, it's not going to work out uh, too well for him as he's still down a full stock off stage, back at the ledge yet again, and Dill just all over this man right now. And a lot of players at Zeno have commented about how like they all feel frustrated when they fight against Dill because he never like overextends himself too much. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to like punish him. He, they feel like he's almost unpunishable. And we're definitely like seeing that right here where he just has yet to like get hit by like a back air or anything. I, I feel like Ralphie's very rarely exerted any sort of shield pressure against Dill this whole game so far. He, I mean, Absolutely. he had to. He wasn't going to make it, so might as well just throw out an attack while you're out there. Out there. So just wasting on the climb hazard. Waste that banana. Not dead. If he hit him with that banana, it definitely would have been it. <laughs> a little uh, too high percent to be able to go for any conversion, so he elects to go back on stage with the banana, but he will die to an up air for it. Dill thought that Ralphie was going to like immediately get up. That's why he walked up there with that up tilt, and they gave R Ralphie an important moment to come back up with that up air. Now he's thinking at 174%. He's literally a sneeze away, down tilt, banana peel, anything you want into an up smash, F tilt, up air, like he's going to die. 
So he's got to play out of his mind and safe as sound if he wants to bring this game to his victory. We even tried to go for an early gimp. That down tilt, very risky. He's going to pay the price for it. Mm, the Pied Piper, as I believe they say in uh, Pied Piper land. That the, was game one. The what? Pied Piper land. I'm not going not gonna to continue on that. Cause, okay. Yeah. Uh, I was just curious. Uh, yeah, no, it's it's, it's a place. I, I, I We have time. You know, it was probably going to play some over. So uh, you, I, th you know. I, think we should, I think we should talk about the stage. Uh, okay. Uh, the, the stage cool. Uh, Looks like we're going I'm to Lilac like Cruise. I'm not, I'm not that bad. Of a commentary. We have we have Lilac Cruz coming up, and um, that's this, an interesting pick. It's a, a pretty okay pick because Cloud is good on this stage, and usually if the triplots get banned like they were by Dill, this is usually a stage that you'll see Ralphie pick. This or like Town and City. Yeah. Smash was also a good. Like, Cloud is pretty much good on any stage, as long as it, as long as he's got platforms to play with. That's all he needs. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, last place he'll ever want to go would be uh, Final Destination, you know, like it's going to be like it's going to be so much easier for Dill to land, so much easier for him to just like like plow through him in the neutral and no. everything, missing both of those nares unfortunately, but he's got him right where he wants him and yeah. that's good, dead Dill! That is a uh, oof, landing that neutral are putting Dill into a pretty bad spot and now Ralphie only has 31% on him, can try to like run away with this one and go into a game three We've seen Ralphie lose game one and win the next two games in the past today. But, oh, no, forcing him to expend his limit. That forward error is something, a force to be reckoned with, dude. dude. You may have a big sword, but he's got two monkey feet. Yeah. Which is just about the size of a one buster sword. Ooh. Oh, my God. Slowly but surely, though, he's tacking on that damage even more. That caught his jump. Dead. Oh, no, no he had his jump. My mistake. It caught his up B, yes. ladies and gentlemen. As a cloud main 101, you need to hold on to that jump for dear life if you don't have limit. And even if you do have limit, you want to hold on to that so you can hold limit. That was a really good play by Dill on the platform right there. Not uh, not pressing a button, uh, noticing that. Uh, ooh, Get him out of air here. Dodge with the finishing touch. Dill rolling his eyes at that one. He is none too happy about that. Well, Dill's probably frustrated because he jumped at him. Like, Dill probably... Dill definitely has the patience to be able to just try to like go, you know, wait for the downer to go off. But he just jumped a little bit too early, got caught by the downer, put him into because it was the sour spot of down air. After it started flash, stop flashing green, he uh, was able to com combo that into a finishing touch. So mm -hmm. Dill was just like, why didn't I just stay grounded, man? Why did I even try to punish that? Because Ralphie was playing the game correctly. He was on the platform, camping the platforms until the, get the banana peel like disappears. And he has the lead. He has a stock lead, so why not? <laughs> oh my god, I don't know if you heard that. Um, he threw the banana up and the banana did not exactly come back down. There was a very distinct popping sound. Oh yeah. Actually, I don't even, it was actually off screen. I don't think he knew that the uh, balloon was there. Diddy's Kong, Diddy Kong's worst nightmare. The oh, banana sure. peel hits the balloon by accident. For sure. Diddy's definitely have like nightmares before they go into like a Smash Brothers fight or something. Of just like, you know, them fighting on Town and City and their banana just not coming back down. It's a tragedy. It's, it's definitely a tragedy told in one part. Ooh, trying to catch that monkey flip. He falls with the up air and is able to get a fair conversion off of it slowly but surely. It was tacking on that damage and just comboing that grab within his banana as it falls back down. Dill is just so good at that. He's so good at like just the situational awareness of like where his banana is, like when he tosses it up and just waiting to see what his opponent is going to do, like while it's in the air and just reacting accordingly. That's part of just what makes him the amazing uh, Diddy Kong player that he is, you know. And so far, it's looking like it's looking like it's working out just really, really well for him. As about there's a, uh, as there's about a hundred percent different. Uh, Percentage differential between these players already. Dill looking mighty pretty coming into game three. Now he's sitting at a very high percent. Maximum rage though, if you can get like one slick combo going. It's all it takes. And he's looking for like a down air, neutral air, up air, anything to get like something started. And you can try to space out those back airs. It's completely safe if spaced well. There's really nothing that Dill can do. Neutral air, read the tech. Thought he was gonna tech in. Doesn't matter, has him off stage. Deletes the banana peel in the process. That's why I opted to go for that down tilt, and he tried to keep following him, but he just followed him a little bit too closely, ended up dying. 82%. Is the nightmare of Dill gonna continue, Alistair? Uh, well, Ralphie's still in this. He's got him at 96%, he just needs to solidify this kill. For sure, for one. sure. He's just gotta keep fighting, he's gotta get that limit. 
is what he needs to, if he wants to be able to steal this stock out nice and early so he doesn't wind up taking too much percentage on the second one. Or you could just do a rising down air, a rising hard down air without the limit. You know, you don't even need the limit. The that is, works too. He took like 20 damage from that rocket barrel boost. And so like, that, was a, that was a big meaty hit. So at least still got like the last laugh, you know. Seeing at 64%, final stocks for both competitors. Who's going to be moving on to Grands and who's going back to the loser side? We'll find out. I mean, Ralphie's hitting at 75% already. He's trying to run around these platforms, find this opening, this defense I with tell the you, pivot grab. I can tell you this venue is definitely rooting for Ralphie right now. They want to see somebody else take the helm. Or just like at least like <laughs> or at least like take Dill out and send him to losers. Sick of seeing this guy winning every week, unfortunately. Not that they don't love him, but you know what it is. But so far it is looking really good for Dill, but he's got him in the air. Ooh, catch him back I thought he was gonna get that monkey back. flip. Could you imagine? That would have been absolutely nutty. Especially yeah. considering he only had one stock. Okay, 152%. Alright, tossing the banana up. He's gonna back air a couple of times for his pleasure. Yeah. That move is virtually lagless. Just setting up a wall. Ralphie's gonna respect it. So might as well just charge the limit. Trades the downer with the up air. Unfortunately, not a good trade for Ralphie. Dill's gonna be moving on to grand finals. And a 2-1 victory over Dill. Dill sitting in grands yet again. And you know what this is, honestly? I think New York City players are just not trying. I just got as much say, as they used to. For right. all of you out for all of you New Yorkers that are in the venue and who always comes to like Wristfest. How far away is Wristfest from here? Um, he lives in the great town, uh, my town of Teaneck, New Jersey. I don't know what that is. It's very, very close. It's right across the bridge. So yeah, it's really close. Like Jen literally walks across the bridge and then like Riz like picks him up. At, oh, that's uh, got like a nearby, yeah, like a nearby place. And like Jen lives really close to like the bridge on oh, the other okay. side as well. So, you know, he's basically an honorary North Jersey member right now. Yeah. Well, speaking of Jen, he's nowhere to be seen here in Loser Senpai. So we got Venia versus Zane <laughs> happening right now. Bayo versus Greninja. Zane's sitting in top four. You know, maybe if you get to sneak this win across Greninja, maybe the Bayo is what we need to combat Dill. I mean, that's very true. You know, as far as like, you know, like. But the thing is that, you know, like, as far as, like, quote-unquote, like, and I do say this, like, with emphasis, quote-unquote, bad killed. matchups, bad DI, bad kills against Bayonetta. That was, I mean, that, that, he, that is a lot of knockback. I was gonna say, as far as, like, quote-unquote, like, bad matchups go against Bayonetta, Diddy does pretty well against Bayonetta, you know, but at the end of the day, it is still Bayo. Uh, it is pretty much theorized or generally accepted by some people that she really does not lose any matchups. So, you know, maybe you're right. Maybe a Bayo is what we need. Maybe today is Zane's time to shine. And it's looking like that might be the case so far again. That which time do the up smash take even out these stocks real quick up against Venia? So far, so good for both of these players right now. None, uh, none either too, uh, too far in the advantage. I think since Smash 4, it's like you're a good character if you have the ability to bring it back from the depths of defeat. And what characters can do that? We got Bayonetta can do that with Witch Time. You no, know, Cloud can do that with Limit. Like, there's a lot of characters that have the ability to do that. Sure, you can from Ryu. And, but Greninja, still out here, catches him again with a different wow. move that time. He's using the special moves to get those kills. First it was a counter, then it was a Shadow Sneak. Yeah, both of these guys just nodding their head right now. They're just like, yeah, you know, I'm Venia. That's what I do. My, my name is Venia. I'm Venia. Look at him, look at him smiling. Wait, He's you're like, Venia? Yeah. Look at him smiling. He's like, yeah, I'm Venia. No, I'm not Venia. No. You just said, okay. No, I, I was being Venia. You were like, being Venia. I was like, I was, I was I make believe. I was like, make believe. Was improvising. Oh. Yeah. I, would, gotcha. I, I would pretend. There. Smashville. Here we go. Venia versus Zane in game numero dos. Here we go. Right, so right so off the bat, you thought he was going to like go for a jump there, catch him with the neutral air? Perhaps. So far, already looking pretty, uh, pretty, pretty right now. But Zane slowly but surely fighting his way back a little bit, getting a clean 35. You know, putting uh, putting one percent rage on uh, on Venia right now. Take that. Getting him up, trying to juggle him with the up airs as well. Bayonetta's up air is just an amazing tool, not just for killing but for juggling as well. Such a such a good coverage option. Bayonetta, I believe, is canonically eight feet tall, and that does carry through to this game as well. She's got those long, like slender legs. And they're powerful too. So, you know, she's just going to be swinging those around up in the air with that up air, you know, just covering more landing options than you could ever really expect. Is that up air from uh, Greninja does not take the stock just yet. And Venia just doing what he does, going for all the down airs off the stage right there to confirm into a forward air. 
But just as I say that, Zane is going to answer right back with an up smash of his own, evening this game out completely. That was just uh, quite the turn of events. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so myself, man, I was just like, about to say, like, you know, like there's there's a certain flow of commentators where like, like, oh, it's your turn to talk. It's my turn to talk. And in my turn to talk, just like so much happened in the match. Just it both was, of these guys mm -hmm. just took each other out already. And now Benny is doing what he does best, man. Just dragging him down to the ground. Oh, he got oh. a kill. Almost got a kill off that. That was almost, it was disgusting, but it was almost like revolting. When Greninja drags down someone with up air, it's just, oof. Yeah. It's good. It's definitely a big oof. It's some good stuff. It's some good stuff, if I've ever done to see some oh. stuff before. Tr trying to catch that Witch Twist into an afterburner kick. He was able to shadow sneak out. The okay. And Zane, literally dropping his jaw in awe of what just happened to him. I don't know if you saw the player cam right there. It just... Straight down. He's like, that spiked me. He immediately asked Venya about it. They're talking about it right now. Take a look at the bottom right corner, ladies and gentlemen. Because that's where you're not only you're going to see the kill, it's where you're going to see Zane and his reaction. You saw the jaw drop. He didn't understand what just happened to him. He feels like as a grown-up, he deserves to know. His set with Dill for the most part, I mean... It really only became like a little more dominant in Dill's favor, like towards the end, yeah. like for the first game and a half. It was mad close. Really. It was mad close, yeah, for sure. Speaking of mad close, uh, Venia and Ralphie, definitely boys. They're mad close. Now they're about to be even closer because they're fighting. Yep. Well, <laughs> each actually, other in loser's well, actually final. on the setup, they're pretty far away. But. Well, yeah, like on you know because we we dual setups out here in dual 2018. Dual setups. Dual setups. I love out that. Here in 2018. Favorite thing about Zeno, honestly. For sure, I love that. Okay, get that neutral air. Thought he was going to try to get that follow up, but you know, Ralphie just wanted to play a little bit safe. Spike him back down on the ground. Make him second guess before trying to jump at him again. It's usually just sent out there to like send home a message. Like, you can't get away with just spamming up air on me. Okay, nice catch. Does the ledge drop into a backer? This could be an opportunity to go for an edge guard. That was a really good recovery coming from Venia. Yeah, I thought Ralphie was kind of just sitting there. Uh, I think he was just sitting on ledge waiting to do like a drop uh, cross lash so that back air does not take the stock. Uh, but instead, he just waited to see where Venia was going to go because I think Venia, while he was off stage, gets really thirsty with that one. Just that was supposed to be out. a blade beam. Yeah, yeah. That was 100% supposed to be a blade beam because that would have caught him. Because that up smash is going to do it. But while he was waiting off stage right there, he kind of just like... Venia while he was uh Venia while he was just like floating off stage while he was like looking at uh Ralphie while he was just hanging on the ledge. At a certain point he reacted to that and saw the like, yeah, he's waiting like to do like a drop cross slash, so I'm gonna recover high instead. Ralphie, unfortunately for him, just not reacting to it, and because of that, he is going to lose a stock first. That was Venia really here. smart recovery from Ralphie. What just happened there is that Venia shot his hydro pump at him, and then he used his double jump to go up with the water to give him some more verticality. That was pretty clever. I mean that just that just comes with matchup knowledge, honestly. For sure. Greninja's a fairly, as far as technicality in Smash 4 goes, Greninja for sure is definitely one of the game's more technical characters as well. Character presses a lot of buttons. Not always the easiest buttons as well as that back air is going to do it, speaking of easy buttons. He just followed him that whole time. Who catches the jump out of shield. Okay, this could be Ralphie's time to get some combos going. Oh, I like the double perfect pivot. He knew where he was going to go, but unfortunately he just couldn't jump and get an up air out in time before Venia could place out a hitbox of his own. And that's going to be a down tilt to an up smash. Game one going to Deadly Alliance. His very own Venia. Venia is really good at controlling this character. He's really good at just like dashing up, canceling it into a down tilt. And just like he gets so, he gets so much mileage off of that down tilt. He does. He, like, he just got that up smash kill. Man. Definitely low key it. one of Greninja's, mm -hmm. if not his best move. Down tilt or neutral air, man, like one of the two. Yeah, they, but they both lead to combos, they both lead to kills. Mm -hmm. As long as you got that, I think you're an okay character in this game. I'd like to see that on all those like Twitter posts of like what this character's best move is. <gasps> that was scary for a second. If you were to hit that dash attack, that'd be a dead Ralphie. Yeah, but it's a good thing we don't have one of those yeah. on, on the screen right now. I mean, I, I don't see a dead Ralphie. He's on the screen. He's fighting. You know, like, it just started. Both these guys at 0%. The match mm -hmm. just started. Yeah. You know, they, you know that's what happens at the beginning of a Smash Brothers match. You both start at 0, you know. Uh, but I think that, I think it might be broken or something. I think uh, Venia might have a handicap on because he started with 2. And uh, Ralphie started with 1. Don't exactly know how that happened there. But it looks like they're going to play it out regardless. And uh, Venia still uh, sitting pretty up a full stock in terms of both... Uh, both in terms of both the stock and percent already. Is he going to hydro pump him again? Off. Not quite. He was just able to barely, barely get low enough and get that sweet spot to be able to make it back. Good stuff to Ralphie. Just, uh, just, uh, just like very, uh, 
very scarily but surely uh, making sure he stays in this bracket right now. Vene is literally just one down tilt away, one neutral air away from closing out the set. Or just catch him laying back down on the ground. That was a... Uh, wow. He was just all over Venia, uh, Ralphie. I felt like Ralphie's entire momentum just got destroyed by that early game. Well. I mean, that's what you got to do against Cloud, you know? Like, that's Cloud's biggest weakness. You get him off stage without a double jump or a limit. Like, he's dead. Like, you saw him go for that double jump immediately. That's why Venia put out his little toe there. Ralphie perhaps might have should have played a little bit more patient on that recovery. What kind of monster just uses a water to push Cloud off stage like that? What kind of monster would ever do something like that? I mean, technically, it's a pocket monster. Tournament. All the slides. Let's go. And the game can start now. All right. We are here at Grand Finals. Uh, a first Grand Finals. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this before. Uh, we have Till versus Venia. Grands of Zeno, mm -hmm. that, that's crazy. That never happens, ever. And for those that don't know, this has happened the past three times. Yeah, I was being completely sarcastic for those of you watching the stream who didn't understand that. But I assume most of you did, if you're frequent viewers of the Zeno stream. We got Dill sitting very pretty on the winner's side of the bracket, aiming to be the first uh, player in Zeno history to take four Zeno tournaments in a row. That's actually a... That, 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 it's a big deal. It is a, it, it's a, it's a pretty big deal. So there, there is... <laughs> Not gonna lie, it's a, it's a huge deal. Yeah. And uh, Venia, pretty much the second place champion for every single Xeno this season. He is hoping to not only break that curse and break that string, but also stop Dill from being the first ever player uh, to win four tournaments in a row, and to also just save everyone's mind from watching Dill win a fourth Xeno in a row. I'll he's, see if he he's can... the hometown hero right yeah, now. Yeah, I mean, Venia is the king of second place in the past couple of weeks, man. Like, every every you know this season, second place. And it's just like, this could be his opportunity to try to do something, but it's got a long, big mountain to climb because he's got to like, take not just one, but two sets from Dill. Both starting at pretty even percents. Venia's just having a hard time just getting back down to the ground. But with the banana, he's actually protecting the banana now, you'll notice. Puts it to the right side to give Dill without it, but he does not need it. Down tilt? Up oh, smash. Trying to space out the back ears yet again. Venia is just going to chill. He's out of jumps. He's going to force you to go into his up B. Try to get with the rocket barrel boost. Covered so many different options with that kill. Wow. This is just an insane edge guard, honestly. Yeah, now, for sure, for sure. Now we got Dill bringing it back here. Got a pop gun his way in. Toss the banana once. Only got one more toss before that evaporates. And look how patient he's playing. He's like he's like chilling away from Venia. Waits for an opening, gets in there, tries to tech on damage, but doesn't like overstay his welcome. Again, same thing happening again. Sees him coming down, just walls him out with the forward air. It can be insanely frustrating to deal with this. There we go. Big boy plays coming from Venia. Bro, that, air. Censor that. The kids can't see that. Yeah. I'm shocked Dill went for that air dodge. Like, I guess maybe he just thought that Dill was gonna go up and up air. Him. Yeah, not gonna lie. I mean, he started charging that. Uh, he char started charging that up smash way before like even the semblance of the situation of the air dodge was out. It's not even just like a read of him. Uh, a read of him air dodging right there. It's just the situation didn't exactly look right. It looked like Dill could have at least reacted to it beforehand. But like you said, uh, I don't really know why he did it either. It seemed like he could have gotten out of that pretty easily. But uh, that is not the case for Dill. Unfortunately, he's going to falter. His uh, second stock, uh, his uh, first stock, I should say, uh, his first stock to that, and uh, then he uh, slowly but surely bringing this back. Only about a 30, 40% uh, differential, I should say, between these guys right now. Just one or two more solid combos from Venia, perhaps some stray hits on that front, and this game will all of a sudden be relatively even. But you gotta be patient around Dill. You gotta be patient around the banana. It's one of the biggest things about fighting Diddy Kong. You gotta play around the gosh darn banana. And when you don't, you get up tilted. Yep. So we got uh, Dill up one to zero against Venia, one game away from taking home his fourth Zeno, the first player ever to win a four Zenos in a row. That's one month, y'all. That that's, that's a month of just winning. Just you know his pocket is filled with money. That is quite yeah. the feat. My man has taken home cash. Really, Zeno is, and dare I say, and I will come out and say this, is one of the most stacked locals in the country. Let alone on um, the coast. At least I think that. In terms I of the used to think have, that. You used to think that. Lately, I don't believe it. But no. in the past, yes. 
I mean, definitely there are some pretty crazy stacked ones out in SoCal. <laughs> you know, that comes along. I, I should have just said East Coast at the very least because yeah, I think no, that yeah, is yeah. true. I, yeah. But yeah, you know. And we got 89% tacked on to Dill. Venia doing pretty good here on Final Destination is a uh, stage of choice. He says he loves doing it even against Diddy Kong because he was one of those gosh darn platforms. Gur, get off my lawn. Yeah, it's pretty scary actually. I mean, really. And just got to say, really Ooh, ballsy. Ooh, the neutral wanting air. To fight, uh, wanting to fight in Devon. He, he's putting his hand. I, you guys can't see it, obviously, but he is putting his hand on his head. And speaking of putting his hand on his head, we got Venia putting his hands above his head with that up smash. Uh, that up smash show you can uh, able to take out uh, Dill's first stock. Feeling pretty comfortable on a stage that he likes, regardless of the uh, character he's fighting against and the matchup. Like you said, it's really ballsy for him to really want to take Dill to a stage like this. I mean, it's really hard for like a lot of characters to really play around the banana on this stage. It's so easy for like Diddy's neutral to just overwhelm you on the stage as well, as well as easy for him to land. So, you know, like you said, it, it is a relatively questionable pick, but it is a good stage for Greninja as well. And, it, you know, for Venia, like you said, it's kind of a comfort pick. So, you know, I mean, if he's if he's comfortable on this stage against uh, Dill, and so far it's looking really good for him, he still hasn't lost his uh, still hasn't lost his first stock yet. And really, what does the character matter? What well, doesn't matter? Working man. out for him, apparently. I think Dill's only still at pretty low percent. Could easily try to close out the stock and bring this back to even game. But he's got to close out now. He's got to keep this momentum. He's got to hold on to it. He's got to get two games this set. Dill putting out these forward airs as a wall. I mean, at this point, Dill's going to be looking for like a down tilt. Down tilt can easily land into an up smash or just go for it, Rock, because he's catching that double jump. Ooh, what a mix nice up. Nice tomahawk. That was a very magician's trick. Nice tomahawk to be able to get that kill. Z dropping his banana behind him, making him think he's just going to like do a little empty hop, land, grab it, and throw it forward. And then Diddy, with his raw, incredible dash speed that he has in this game, is able to just tomahawk Venier, run up, grab him, and get that patented up throw to up air. Cross up the eye, able to take out Venia's. First stock, very good stuff. Classic uh, fundamental base play coming out from Dill. Get trying to catch this back here. He's out of jumps, catches the monkey flip immediately. A second one, really? He didn't even move. He didn't even move. He just stood there and like did the cheer squad. He was like, ready? Okay. Twice Got it both times. Row. I mean, he knew that Dill was going to drift into it every single time. Dill sitting at 73%. You know, he's fishing for those pivot grabs. Ooh, Shadow sneaking his way out. Greninja does not like any combo. I just had flashbacks to the last, you know, the last time like he triggered that counter with down tilt and it happened four times in a row. Yeah. Gotta watch out for it. I did not want history to repeat itself. Venny was very aware this time around. He went the platform, so. 111 to 69%. Back here. No, getting pushed back instead. Now Dill's gotta be careful. Venny is one neutral air away from getting the closing out this game. No grab into up air could also work. Okay, good spacing with that back here just pushes him away. You see him jumping all over the place. Dill's just going to cl remain calm, chill back, hold on to that peel for as long as possible. These are the kinds of situations where you have to remain calm. When you're down against your opponent, when you know you have to, when you know you are the one who has to approach, you are the one who has to think up of something clever to make your way in that neutral and eventually get the game, not quite yet. Uh, when you're that person, you just got to relax. When you start getting comboed and everything, you know, you just got to chill, assess your situation a little bit, just breathe, don't let yourself get overwhelmed or anything, just like so many players typically do against Diddy Kong. Both these players, you don't get the grand finals of a Xeno unless you're, you know, calm enough. You don't get to be at this stage of the game unless you know how to handle your nerves, or at least your tournament nerves. And the stakes are insanely high right now. 111 to 138. He's literally one down tilt from winning this tournament. Almost got that up tilt. That would have worked just as well. Got the down tilt coming from Venia. Try to get the edge guard, edge hog. Just goes for a pivot grab and do an up throw, trying to mix up Dill's DI. This man peel instead. Loses the peel. Tries to spawn that it again. Venia it. capitalizing on the spawning of the peel, punishing it, and brings us to a game three scenario. Super close game. But now we got Dill with the counter pick. And Dill's probably going to take him to like Battlefield or Smash. Probably. What is the ban? That's the ban. Lila no, is the ban. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Venia does not like Lila. Uh, it's it's not because of the layout, it's because of, like he just doesn't like the tilting and not being able to grab the ledge sometimes. Yeah, for sure. Hopefully, yeah. the stage will be fixed for ultimate. Here Hopefully. we go, going straight to Battlefield. Like you said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tri-plats. You don't like plats platforms? Here's three of them. That was just a point 
blank peanut pop gun shot. Okay. I feel it. I get that. Trying to push him off the platform with that forward air. Now, Vinny's just going to have to remain calm for as long as possible here. And also, something that Vinny could employ is he's been playing a lot more defensive against Dill lately. He can easily do that on these platforms. If he manages to snag that lead and just kind of camp the platforms a bit, forcing Dill to approach him. But he is losing by a little bit here. Got to get some momentum first. Bam, Peel's going to get eaten alive by that forward air. About a 40% differential between these players right now. Many are slowly but surely trying to tack that on. He's got him at 92. No air dodge allowed. As a back. Now, Dill has such a great lead. He can easily just chill underneath the platform. This is another reason why Vinny despises fighting Dill on the stage. Dill can just chill. Look at that. That position when he has the peel in hand underneath the platform, that disallows Vinny from being able to jump in with a neutral air from like anywhere on the stage. Yeah, absolutely, because all Dill is going to do in that situation is roll back or shield and then just chuck that banana on you as a whip punish and you're going to be eating a lot more damage than, frankly, you're going to want to, but that you will deserve to if you do some uh, greedy, impatient options like that. So it's just like you said, on a stage like this, what's a, what's a little, what's a frog to do? What's a frog to do just to uh, find his way out of the pond and then just immediately just get devoured by a monkey? He's got to unload the toad, man. It's just, it's, just, it's nature. Because as soon as they like, as soon as they raise up from like little tadpoles making their way out the pond, you know a monkey is just going to eat him alive for breakfast. Get him off stage and try to get an untackable stage situation. Not going to happen. He's going to be able to get his iframes uh, off the ledge, barely just in time to I, avoid that back air. I do want to talk about how Dill just walked across the entire stage to go for an up tilt. Very obviously. Then he had a nice most, catch uh, on that monkey flip. Not enough to get that kill though. Mm. Yeah, battlefield is just a, it's a big, it's a big stage. Sometimes the most obvious options wind up being some of the best mix-ups you can find, like or like the quote-unquote like scrubby options, if you would, because scrubby options become, in a sense, like the higher the level of play, like the really higher level of play, they become better and better, because you never expect a player that good to do something so stupid, frankly, and then uh, all of a sudden this really bad option becomes a mix-up. Hit him with the sour spot of the up smash, speaking of mix-ups, sending him in a direction he did not expect. Got that peel. He's showing that again, like this is what Dill's, this is Dill's home. That he wants to camp underneath that platform the second he has disadvantage or back to neutral with the banana peel in hand. And Benny's got to try to just capitalize while he doesn't have the banana. Rocket barrel boost. He was way wow. too low for that to actually work. Yeah, Dill definitely a little upset leaning back in his chair. And this could be a potential bracket reset for Venia. That would be, uh, that would be relatively huge and this venue would definitely be a uh to definitely go a little nuts to see a set taken off Dill in the Grand Finals here after a while and potentially yep. him losing a tournament. And he ate that double jump, so he had to go for the Hydro Pump immediately. Dill's running away with this a bit, using the command grab from the monkey flip off stage, 99%. He has the banana peel again, chilling underneath that platform, doesn't want to approach too often. The second Benny gets above him, he knows he'll run to the other platform. This is pretty much what, the, it, it's hard for Benny to try to find his way in. Mm. That and, uh, and unfortunate situation for Venia to throw himself into. He missed the ledge, and he had to go for the recovery from all the way at the bottom battlefield. Venia, or Dill's going to be able to capitalize on that, get that back right here. He wanted to get grab that ledge, but then he like air dodge, fast fell through it, did not grab it in the end, and because that put him into a bad position, stage spike. And Dill has broken the record. Four Zeno wins in a row. I don't want to interview him.